exciting day for Washington, for our franchise. And I am super excited to introduce Adam Peters <clears throat> as the next general manager of the Washington Commanders. Thank you for being here, Adam. Um, I want to thank Adam and his lovely wife, Jen. Nice to meet you and two daughters uh, for choosing our franchise. <clears throat> I think as many of you probably have heard, he had a number of opportunities, so we're so happy and appreciative that you all have um, uh, joined us here on our quest to build an elite franchise. I know we're going to do it together. So thank you. I also want to thank <coughs> my partners, uh, Mitch Rails, uh, Irvin Magic Johnson, David Blitzer, and obviously uh, our advisors, uh, Rick Spielman and uh, Bob Myers. Uh, we couldn't have done it without you guys. It was an amazing process. Thank you for your support. And uh, on to the next one. We still have a lot of work to do. So we set out to find a leader, <clears throat> someone who could take this franchise to the next level and build an elite team that consistently competes for championships. In Adam, I think we have the right leader. He's a winner. Uh, he's made an incredible impact everywhere he's been starting obviously with uh, the New England Patriots uh, on to the Denver Broncos where they won a Super Bowl and then at the San Francisco 49ers. Together, we are committed to restoring this franchise to the highest levels. Adam, again, we're excited you're here and now time to get to work. So passing it over to you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Josh. Um, well, I'd like to start by thanking you guys all for being here today. This is, this is truly an honor. I'm, I'm so excited to be here today. Um, start off by thanking Josh and, and really the entire commander's organization and, and ownership group, including David Blitzer, Magic Johnson, Mitch Rails, and all the, all the guys that I met today. Uh, it's been wonderful meeting you all and, and really had a great, great time meeting you all this past week. Thank you guys so much for giving me this opportunity. It's the opportunity of a lifetime. Uh, it's really an honor to be a general manager and really the biggest honor to be the general manager of the Washington thank Commanders. You. Thank you. Um, I'd also like to thank Bob Myers and Rick Spielman, both of whom I've gotten to know throughout this process. Uh, it's been really, really good getting to know them. They've been great resources, tremendous sounding boards, and I greatly appreciate them throughout this process. Um, starting to get into, uh, take a moment to thank some of the people that really made a big difference in my life. Uh, starting first and foremost with my beautiful wife, Jen, who's here today. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, my, I, I'm really nothing without you. You're, you're the best person I could have ever met, and, and from the bottom of my heart, I thank you so much. Alex and Emmy, you guys are being really good right now. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for being here with me today, too. Thanks for being good. Uh, my parents. My parents are... Uh, they just they gave me everything. They showed me what hard work was, dedication, uh, and what love looks like. Uh, my mom up in heaven, my dad, who's hopefully watching right now, thank you guys so much for instilling all that in me, and, and I know that's going to go through to our beautiful girls right here, too. Uh, my sisters, Joanne and Stephanie, hopefully you guys are watching today. Thank you for your love and unwavered support. Doug Hendrickson, a very good friend, also my agent, but first and foremost, a better friend. Thank you so much for your belief in me. I, it means the world, and, and I'm, I wouldn't be here without you. Um, I've had a ton of mentors throughout the years. I'd love to sit here and name them all to you guys. We'd be here all night, but I just want to start by thanking a few people that really impacted my life at an early age. One is my high school coach, Dave Vieira. Uh, he's one of the best men I've ever met in my life. He instilled in me mental toughness, an incredible work ethic, how to push through adversity, and a ton of different life lessons and one-liners that I'll never forget. Um, Don Johnson, uh, may he rest in peace up in heaven. He just passed away. He was my coach at UCLA, uh, father figure, a man who I'll always admire and try to emulate in everything I do. And Randy Taylor, who gave me my first role in this business at UCLA, uh, gave him my shot, believed in me, and really uh, helped me kick off my career. I can't thank you enough, Randy. Um, Moving on to the 49ers, first I'd th like to thank the Jed and Danielle and the entire York family. Not only do they run a first-class organization, but they treat <laughs> us all like family. And they were incredible in my development. They gave me everything I needed to, to be here today. And for, I'll be forever thankful and indebted to them. 
John Lynch and Kyle Shanahan and their wonderful families. Thank you guys for the leadership you showed me and the friendship you gave me and all the lessons. Uh, the entire San Francisco 49ers organization, the players, just an incredible group of men who it was a pleasure to go to work with every day and really everybody in that organization, but especially the people I worked really close with and that's our scouts, our personnel department, our R&D department and our coaches. Uh, lifelong friendships, just incredible relationships and, and working together side by side with all of them. I wouldn't be out here without them. Um, and last but not least, the 49er faithful, a great fan base. It's just like this one, passionate and, and loyal, and thank you guys for all your support. <coughs> well, all that support and mentoring has gotten me here today, and this is where I'm supposed to be, the general manager of the Washington Commanders, and I, I can't tell you guys how excited I am to be here. It's, this is absolutely incredible. I've been pinching myself, and I'm so excited to get started. And I'm going to tell you guys, I promise you, we're going to work tirelessly to build this franchise. This is one of the cornerstone franchises in the NFL. The pillars of the National Football League is an incredible area. The DMV, our nation's capital, I could not be more thrilled to be here. Our family could not be more thrilled to be here today and lead you guys. <coughs> I know how much this franchise means to our fans. Uh, I'm extremely, extremely motivated to deliver everybody what they deserve. We're going to build this team the right way. We're going to build it with a great process and a clear vision. And you guys are going to see that on the field with the energy, the passion, the toughness, the physicality, and all those things that are going to resonate in the DMV area. Uh, it's going to remind you guys what this franchise was built upon. Um, the foundation and the resources that this ownership has given, oh, excuse me, ownership group has given us uh, is all we need, and it's my job to execute that vision now. We're going to surround ourselves, like, like Josh said, with the very best people and be aligned in everything we do working toward that common goal. So that process starts right now with the critical step. We're going to hire the new head coach here soon. And this is something we dove into head first as soon as I was hired. So uh, again, I want to thank Josh. I want to thank his partners and for this opportunity of a lifetime to lead this team <coughs> in this region, our nation's capital, and to have all your incredible support and commitment to being a first class organization. Uh, I'm all in. I'm all in. We are all in. I can't wait to get started doing everything we, we can to restore this proud <coughs> franchise to where it belongs. Uh, thank you with that. We're, all, we're happy to answer questions. Yep. Nikki Chapala with the Washington Post. Um, for Adam, uh, what appealed to you the most about Washington since you did have options? And secondly, what's generally your approach <coughs> in building out the front office and staff? Hey, Nikki. Nice to meet you. I think I knew you a little bit in Denver. Um, well, everything is the answer to that question. Everything is exactly what a person in my seat would want. A great ownership group, a great fan base, the ability to start new with a new coach. All of those things were so appealing to, to me that really going through this process, it was very clear to me at a very early time, right when I met with Josh, this is where I wanted to be. John Kahn, ESPN. For Josh, <laughs> for Josh first, um, you talk about Adam being a leader. What things did you see in that? that jumped out to you. And then for both of you, Adam, um, if you can talk a little bit about the, the most important things you're looking for in setting up an organizational structure. Yeah, Adam's a winner. He's won everywhere he's been. Uh, first in Boston, then in obviously Denver, then in San Francisco. Uh, and he's learned from a lot of great leaders. Uh, he's about excellence. He's about attracting the best people uh, and then holding them accountable. He's about building edges. Um, he's inclusive. He wants people from a lot of different backgrounds, a lot of different perspectives. And so it was a pretty easy decision from my point of view. In terms of how we do it, uh, both of us work super hard. Both of us want to do things from the ground up, one person at a time. But both of us want to take more of a long-term perspective to build sustainable and elite winning. Uh, and so uh, I think, uh, you know, he was, uh, he was an ideal candidate from my point of view. Yeah, and just hearing that from Josh and, and seeing that our visions were aligned in all those things that he just mentioned made it really, really easy and really exciting for me to be here. Adam David Aldridge <coughs> with The Athletic. Welcome to D.C. Um, I wonder what you think of the current roster. I believe that there's a few cornerstone pieces in this roster. I believe we have a lot of work to do, and that's just evaluating everybody. 
And that's going to start with the coaches. When the <coughs> coaches come in, we hire a head coach. We sit down together with the personnel department, and we sit down and, and evaluate everything and figure out where we need to be. So that's an ongoing process. I've, I've started a little bit, but we have a lot of work to do daily. Michael Phillips, Washington Times, and 910 The Fan. Uh, when you were interviewing the candidates, you had a very attractive field, obviously. What, what was it that set him apart and, and led you to believe this was the right direction to go? Yeah, look, we, we were obviously blessed with the opportunity to talk to many good candidates, and I would say that there were a lot of um, positives of each one of them. And uh, like I said, at the end of the day, uh, the um, – you know our 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 vision uh, our vision is really aligned relative to alignment, excellence, focus, work ethic, uh, and then being very people oriented in terms of talent. And so uh, you know we we decided to go with Adam. Adam also, uh, even though he's I guess at 59, I can say someone in their mid 40s is on the young side now, which is unfortunate <laughs> for me. But notwithstanding his uh, young age, he's been in the NFL for a long, long time, and he know is ready for this this is really what he was ready to do and so we sensed that through the process uh, Ben Standig with the athletic uh, for Adam uh, the number two pick is uh, one of the nine picks that this team has I imagine you're not quite there <clears throat> yet with what you're gonna do with it but what does that opportunity what does that uh, present you as an opportunity not just to potentially draft a player but maybe really help start re jumpstart uh, this whole situation yeah Ben good to see you uh, it's great opportunity but like I said earlier we have a we still have to hire the head coach, and we're going to do that whole process collaboratively. We're going to have we're going to have a great process in deciding what we do there. But like you said, we're we're far from making a decision on that. But really looking forward to diving into that process. Adam Barry Sperluger from the Washington Post. Welcome to town. Um, I wonder if you could go into have you been involved with some head coaching um, interviews already? <coughs> How far along are you in that process? And do you have an inclination that, <clears throat> oh, I want an offensive head coach, I want a defensive head coach, what qualities are attracted to you there? We're looking for the best leader for this team, for the Washington Commanders. And so uh, we, we have set criteria that we're going to have a, be aligned in that vision. And it's not going to be in a box. It's not going to be offense. It's not going to be defense. It's going to be the best leader for this organization. <coughs> Adam Chick Hernandez, WSA 9. Um, along that, those lines, what's for you, for a head coach, both of you, what's the most important factor in hiring a head coach? I think, um, I think in any head coach and any leaders, leadership, leadership, great communication, being able to be honest, direct, and upfront, have all those qualities, and they're all intertwined. But those are, the, those are the main qualities. You have to be very smart. You have to be very driven. There's so many different qualities that, that make up a great head coach and a great leader. But really, it's just about being a great person, a great human being that people will follow. You know, b both of us are, in essence, come from uh, the model that we're stewards for the city and that we're on a mission to deliver success to Washington. And so, obviously, you know, hiring uh, a coach that um, is on the mission with us, that is all in, that can uh, that that that, him, that himself or herself can attract the best people. Uh, you know that you know all of those things, and then hold them accountable. And obviously, ultimately, comes with a certain amount of foot IQ, football intelligence. I think IQ matters. Um, I think it matters increasingly. So I think that all of those things will be important, but. Ultimately, a partner, you know, where the three of us can be aligned and, you know, work for the city on behalf of the city to win. Scott Abraham, ABC 7. This is for Adam. Uh, welcome to Washington. Uh, obviously, as you know, the quarterback position is the most important position in the NFL. How do you view the quarterback situation here in Washington now, and how do you plan to evaluate and maybe attack that position in the offseason or in the draft? Quarterback, just like all the positions, we're going to sit down and evaluate. And that process will start once we hire the head coach and his staff. And we're going to do that collaboratively with the head coach, the, his staff, the personnel department, R&D, analytics, and come up with our evaluations for all that before we move forward. Good afternoon, David Harrison, Sports Illustrated. Uh, Adam, welcome to Washington. And just curious, a lot of experience, obviously. Is there is there a moment that you kind of pull back from and say, this moment 
in your journey here has kind of ed educated you in a front office uh, sense? That's a tough one. There's so many. There's so many <laughs> moments that you think of, and you really always think of the things that, that you messed up on that you learned from, and I've had plenty of those. And it's uh, all of those things have shaped me to who I am today and, and have brought me here. And so I'm thankful I, I could sit here and talk to you guys all day about that, but all those things have brought me here today next to Josh, and I'm so thankful for everything good and bad that's happened to me. Hey, Adam, George Wallace, WTOP, welcome to D.C. Uh, obviously, you've had a number of opportunities last year, this year. How important was it uh, for you choosing D.C. as a chance to kind of put your stamp on everything, kind of like a blank canvas here with head coach, <laughs> the draft coming up, and things like that? It was everything to me. This opportunity with this ownership group in this place, I can't tell you how much that meant to me and, and our family. That's why when this came up, came about and I got to meet with everybody, right away I was all in. I probably wasn't a very good negotiator, but I told them <laughs> I was all in. And that made it easy for me to, <clears throat> to pass up other opportunities, uh, which were great opportunities as well. But this was the best opportunity in my mind in the NFL. Uh, unfortunately, he was a good negotiator. So, uh, <laughs> uh, thank you, agent, for that. But um, look, I think that Adam had done a lot of work. It's worth pointing out, he had done a lot of work on us. Uh, came in super prepared, had researched the team, had researched uh, all of us, had researched the opportunity, had a lot of questions, but at the same time, uh, you know, it, was a, it, it felt like it was an opportunity that he had identified uh, uh, before we had met, and then obviously we all ended up moving forward together. Hi there, Adam. Welcome to the DMV. My name is Candy Waller with Bowie Television. Um, you've been very successful throughout your career. Um, what are some of the things that you've learned from the not so successful moments? <clears throat> All right, Candy, that's a good question. The not so successful moments, and I've had a lot. And I think the, you learn so much in losing, and they say you win and you learn. And that's a good saying that you always hear when. when it's easy, it's a lot easier to learn in a loss than in a win. You have to really challenge yourself to learn in a win. So um, a lot to count. I would say that I've been very lucky to have a lot more success being around a lot of really, really smart people, a lot of very successful people. So very blessed to have that. But all, all of those different really experiences shaped who I am today. And so I'll take them all and I'm happy to move forward with them and, and use all that experience to help us consistently compete for championships. Hey, Adam, welcome to DC, Gio Delfa, NBC, Telemundo. Uh, primarily, there were you've had success throughout your career, but there were a couple of lean years early on in San Fran, no pro bowlers, 4-12 and 12 record. Uh, how long <coughs> does a reset take, and how do you go about it here with the commanders? Yeah, those were dark days, but I think the thing that I, I could tell you is right away, with, with the 49ers, maybe the results didn't show, but you could see it on the field. And you could see what we were doing on the field, and the fans could feel it. And they, they knew it was turning, and we were close. So it's it's really, you can't put time timetables on it, but what I can tell you is that you're gonna see a great, great competitors. You're gonna see physical team. You're gonna be, you're gonna be really impressed with what you see on the field. And it's gonna happen right away, whether the results come right away. You know, that, that's a number of different factors, but you're gonna, you guys are going to be very proud of the team that we're going to put on the field. Adam, <clears throat> welcome to the DMV. Chad Ricardo with Fox 5. I uh, wanted to know, coming off of a four-win season, this is obviously going to be an off-season full of change. What did you see within this roster or even within the culture of the team that you would like to hold on to moving forward? There's a lot of, a lot of good things about this, this building. First... First and foremost, just walking through here today, there's a ton of great people in this building. So it's really, this is not a total rebuild. This is a wonderful group of people here that just needs leadership. That's what I think is the biggest thing is we need leadership and an aligned vision. So that's what I'm gonna bring here along with Josh and our head coach. And I don't think there's wholesale changes needed. I just think we need leadership here and, and that's what we're here to bring. Hey Adam, Chris Bumbaka with USA Today. In your time in San Francisco, what was your biggest takeaway and what it takes to build that sustained winner that you and Josh have both mentioned here? It's having an aligned vision, having collaboration, having inc inclusion with everybody, everybody pulling the same direction, 
That's how we did it in San Francisco, and that's what allows you to get through not just the good times are easy, but that's what allows you to get through the tough times as well. Uh, Mitch Tischler with Monumental Sports. Um, kind of to follow up on that question, a lot of money available here in uh, free agency and obviously a bunch of draft picks. How do you kind of value building a team in free agency versus a draft? I, I find this a very similar situation from when we got to San Francisco in 2017. Uh, a lot of great similarities, so I have a lot to lean on from that experience, both things we did well and things we didn't. But ultimately, we were going to build through the draft here and supplement through free agency. We're going to be very process-driven and diligent in who, in who we select in free agency, but we're going to build through the draft here. Thank you, guys.